this time on Air Show. Whoa! I don't know how to fly so good. A close scrape. What is going on with these guys? Rubs the wing walker Hell. raw. I went ballistic. An emergency. Everybody stay off the radio. Pushes the Patriots to the breaking point. Negative on the landing gear. He has one chance at this. Who's the negative? And Super Dave. Power off. Oh. Attempts his riskiest stunt yet. At an airfield in California. Start take you ready now. One's ready to taxi. We're on 39, taxi to runway 30 for departure. A squadron of former Soviet fighters. Patriot one, go. Roll out. Good morning, NorCal, Patriot one. I would definitely call this the dream team of the air show business. L-39, Lima 39, Albatross. The Patriots are a private air force and air show act. We built this team from two jets all the way to six jets. The jet team recruited some of the best formation pilots in the world. One 400. And everyone on the Patriots, from pilot to pit crew, are unpaid volunteers. There's a lot of people that are amazed that we've been able to put this together. Right turn, well clear. The team is inbound for their next high octane mission. The next show is the Oregon International Air Show. A rare twilight show. The twilight show, for some reason, the colors just pop, the airplane sparkle. It's a great show, it's my favorite show. Anytime the multi-million dollar operation leaves its home hangar. Five, all right, Alpha. The team has to be prepared for anything. If we're not prepared with a plan B, <laughs> anything can happen. And this is their plan B, a former NASCAR hauler packed full of spares. With all the spare parts, we'll keep all six jets in the air. Across the continent, another air show performer is taking her show on the road. Have you seen my airplane? That thing spells fun any way you look at it. Wing walker Carol Pilon thrills spectators on top of her 1940 Stearman biplane. But unlike most planes on the circuit, Carol Stearman doesn't fly from show to show. Carol has decided to go with a biplane in a box. I have a cruise speed of 90 and I have to land every two hours to refuel. This is a big country to start flip-flopping back and forth in with an airplane like that. The Stearman's wings were designed to come off and the plane packs up inside Carol's 30-foot long custom trailer. With her next performance 3,000 miles away in British Columbia, Carol's in for the long haul. And this is where she needs to get to. In Quesnel, British Columbia, aircraft are arriving days before the show. For Air Boss Donna Flynn, Descend 8,000, let me know when you're there. It's shaping up to be her most action-packed show of the season. I love it. Ugh. Air shows are my life. The thrill never dies. Quinnell is the small town show with big time talent. We have big military hardware, top aerobatic pilots. This is a big show. The Patriots jet team is on final approach 
for one of their favorite gigs. Five right days, three green, two air covers. The Oregon International Air Show. This is coming on your left side too. This season, the private team has been bumped up to headline act after budget cuts grounded the military performers. And the boys can't wait to show their stuff. To fill in where the Thunderbirds and the Blue Angels could not, it's an adrenaline rush. Wait, it takes spacing in the dirt. They may be the stars, but right away they realize there's no star treatment. We're not gonna fit everybody over here, Wilma. Taxiing in, they discover their assigned parking space. All jokes and three, not pull up further. Is a tight squeeze. Yeah, three going up a little further, three and four a little further for us. The space they've allocated for us to park in is the smallest I've ever seen, ever. Go to the line before you start turning. Mojo, the Patriots crew chief, smells trouble. Normally we have room to pull out 100 feet before we start a left-hand turn. We're given three feet either side of the airplanes when they're taxiing through here. It's not enough space. Each L-39 has a 30-foot wingspan, and each parking space is barely wide enough. The problem is it gives you no out if you have a brake issue. I'm not comfortable with that, really. Back in Quinnell, one of the newest pilots on the air show circuit is practicing hard. Same game, 2000 up, 19 down. Good. Super Dave Matheson and his crew chief, Mitch, arrived two days early to get in some extra training. Pilots are striving to be the best. They all want to shine in front of the audience. And that's all she wrote. Uh, all right, let's come over for an eye popper again. I see myself as an up-and-comer. I know my place. I'm still new at it. It just takes a lot of practice. Radio Mike Yank Alpha's down. Just on the back track. We'll call you clear. Dave has good reason to bring his A game to Quinnell. You've got probably the most talent in the entire air show industry at this air show. I'm probably the rookie in the bunch. So yeah, I'm, I feel the pressure. Some of the best in the business are here, including aerobatic sensation. Are you telling me I'm gonna be chasing a popsicle? 28-year-old Melissa Pemberton. I flew my first show at 20. There's no how to be an air show pilot. Melissa was taught to fly by her grandmother when she was nine. And by 20, she was the youngest female aerobatic pilot to compete at the US Nationals. Melissa Pemberton's a huge name in the industry. She's incredible to watch fly. Melissa flies an Edge 540, a similar high-performance aircraft to Dave's MX-2. But her act is one of a kind. Jump her away, jump her inside. Here we go. A marriage of precision flying and pure insanity. I fly as fast as I can, and I just entirely trust her not to hit me. <laughs> the jumper. Happy happens to be her husband, Rex. We've been married four years, and we've been doing this the whole time. I'm with you. He calls his turns, and I follow off of him. It's almost like a formation team, like a jet team would do. I'm calling left, I'm calling right, I'm calling altitude. I fly as fast as I can. And then Melissa, with her piloting skill, will do the rest around me. Good canopy. Good canopy. Good canopy. There's one rule that I keep telling people, is you just don't annoy your wife before you go flying, and you're good. Sniffle valve all season. In the hot pit, Super Dave's hoping some of Melissa's magic will rub off on him. Show me, I'll pull my cows after this. Today. Okay, yeah, I'll show it to you. I know I have to earn the respect of each pilot, but it's not gonna stop me from getting advice and knowledge and doing whatever it takes to get better. It looked like it just ran out of energy. I think- Was I going up when I hit it? You're going up So when wait, you hit it? so do it earlier. Do it earlier. You're awesome. I like it. Cool. <laughs> Wingwalker Carol Pilon is working her way across Canada to get to her next air show. The reason I do it this way is because I decided there was no contract that I would refuse based on the fact that my airplane couldn't get there. So I decided to get a truck-trailer combination. I can drive it. I can build it. I get it done. 
but on her final day on the road, Carol's pickup breaks down. This truck and I have not had a good history together. It's broken down since it's been brand new, and it keeps doing it on a pretty regular basis. If you don't show up, you're not going to get paid. It's that simple. If I start missing shows, it is financially going to just kick the crap out of me. Yeah, I'm getting jet ready. Hands on the 2.30. After the long flight from California, Bump, let it up. Don't go very far, because we don't want to catch them down. The Patriots ground crew has two hours to get the jets back in the air. Just keep bumping them and let them back up. Before practice, each L-39 must be looked at from top to bottom. We're just checking uh, hydraulic fluid, and the only way to do that is to bleed off the hydraulic pressure. Without hydraulics, you aren't going to be able to land the plane. Basically, it'd be an emergency situation. The main thing is brakes. Brakes are a big part of stopping an airplane when you land. It's not launching the full But for team owner Randy Howell, maintenance is the least of his worries. Whenever you see a group of FAA folks coming to the hauler, it's not a good thing. At a small airfield in Quesnel, British Columbia, Airboss Donna Flynn has her hands full. Yep, you can stay on, boss. I just have to get the 172 out of the way here. I've got planes arriving. I've got performers practicing. I've got so much on my plate today. It's two days before the air show. Unfortunately, he won't be able to do it now. He's just started his act. All of Donna's performers have shown up, except one. Mr. Compressor's piled up. A broke down truck is costing wing walker Carol Pilon time and money. $2,467.73. These repairs are kind of taking up a pretty substantial chunk of the profit I was expecting to make on this run. Towing her biplane, Carol will now have to drive through the night to make it to the show in time. I think I've been wearing the same pants here for four days. It's getting a little ridiculous. We'll do chocks. Uh, in Portland, the FAA has just shown up for a surprise inspection. Randy does not look happy. Banker, just back from medical leave, has been told he's still not cleared to fly tonight's show. That's going to be a hard hit on us. Even worse, Randy, the team's backup pilot, won't be allowed to fill in like he did at their last show in California. Two wide radio check. The local FAA office rules Randy doesn't have the right class of license to fly in front of a crowd in Oregon. This is not a good scenario. I've never seen this. It's nitpicky, but we all have to follow the rules of the FAA. Whatever route we go, we should have a policy. And... But Randy didn't build his private air force without a few bureaucratic dogfights. Randy, as always, he's got a plan. We're going to have to go with Troy fly in the show, and I'll be the check pilot. I decided that we can fly safely with our safety pilot flying the number six position and me flying the back seat. Troy Myers, call sign Curly, has the right kind of license and has logged hundreds of hours in the L-39. It's something I have a passion for. But he's never flown a full air show. It is a whole new dimension. During performances, Curly always rides as a passenger in the back seat. Oh, geez. So he's qualified, but is he ready to fly the number six position? Now, all of a sudden, I'm being thrown in the front seat on an aerobatic show. Can I do this? Am I ready for this? In Quidel, the wing walker has finally arrived. I'm a day late and more than a couple of dollars short. <laughs> Carol can't wait to get in the air, but it'll be hours before her steerman is ready to fly. I arrive with a truck, a trailer, and an airplane inside it. A little more. Yeah, coming nice. I take the airplane out of the trailer and I build it. Carol Pilon loves her plane. It is her baby. 
hold it, hold it, hold it. Nobody let go, nothing. To connect each 16-foot wing to the fuselage. OK, that should be good. Stop there. Carol uses a custom-built lift she designed herself. Stop there. Each 70-pound fabric-covered wing is secured with just two bolts. It's a pretty simple operation. Simple. As gently as we can. But it has to be perfect. I could never be picky enough when I'm putting together that airplane. OK. It needs to be done right. I'm going to be taking that airplane, putting it in a pilot's hands, and telling him to aim it at the ground like a ballistic missile. Right on that angle. Keep it coming. Keep it coming. Nobody move anything. That is so freaking beautiful, man. I could kiss you right now. After 12 hours and a hot hangar, Carol's Stearman biplane is flight ready. Hey. It's her pride and joy. Nobody can mess with her baby. <laughs> For Super Dave, it's a big red magnet. Hey, Carol. You can't, actually. It's the first time Dave and Carol have crossed paths at an air show. Basically, he offered to come and fly my airplane for me. No, you can't fly my airplane. I know I can fly the biplane. I think it's a cool airplane. If Marcus has some free time and you want to go ride with him, Sweet. that's fine. But he's... You're not just going to get in my airplane and take off with my business. I have to see you fly, and not just like once, like years. OK, all right. I don't understand why Carol doesn't want to play with me. You know, no one else has a problem with me flying in their routines. I actually wanted to be a little bit that side because the wind was on crowd. One guy who doesn't have a problem playing with Dave is Kent Peach. He's a legend, and he wants to now fly with me. I started the air show business in 1974. I'm not an overnight success. Kent is a second generation air show pilot. He flies the slowest, simplest airplane on the circuit. What the heck is that? It's a 1941 Interstate Cadet. But it's what he does with it. Oh, yeah, that was a wingdinger. That gets everyone's attention. My first routine is a comedy act. Contact. I basically crashed the party. I go in there, and I'm not supposed to be there. Today, during practice, it's Super Dave's show. You call me in. Yeah, I'll call you. That gets interrupted by Ken. Contact. Contact. The trick is to make it look very dangerous, like we're going to have a collision. And just as we go by each other, no, you, that's not good. a big piece of his airplane flies off, and it looks scary as hell. I have a part of the wing that actually falls off. It's called an aileron. I've actually had a fire truck roll. The skid is I'm a guy that comes from prison. You built the aircraft in prison. I felt it, yes, sir, I did. OK, well, I have a little problem here. What's that? Well, I don't know how to fly so good. <laughs> Trying to fly like you don't know how to fly is probably one of the harder things to do. What's your name? My name's Chuck Stramamine. You need to land that airplane. Pull up, pull up, Chuck, Chuck. Boy, thanks for telling me that. I'm scraping wings on the ground and put a bag of flour on there so that it looks like I hit the wing, because I do. Uh -oh. But Kent also knows what it's like to hit the ground for real. Last season, he crashed the cadet. I put it on the ground and hit a ditch. It was after the show, and I was hurrying. Made a fast turn on the runway, and the engine quit at 80 feet up, and it wasn't enough time to get it going again. When that happened to Kent, everybody took a step back. Kent is the last person you'd expect that to happen to. The seat broke out of the airplane, and I went into the windshield. When you're in an airplane, don't hurry. I don't care what it's for. It's dangerous. Over winds, uh, 310 variable. After a tense morning, the Patriots are ready to practice before tonight's big show. Patriots cleared to launch, cleared to the practice area. In number six, Curly, a rookie jet pilot who's never flown a Patriots performance. Lights out. The adrenaline's going. Here we go. We're really doing this. Patriots come out into an echelon right for smoke check. Curly's first challenge, getting out of the tight parking space. Third attack. So our tip tanks are separated by about nine inches. 
Hurley started coming left Six is out of the chalk. before his crew chief gave him a left turn signal. I thought I had enough, and then when I put some left in there. You hear that? Our tip tank's hit. And Mojo, you need to check the left wing. Son of a bitch. Third attack. In Portland, two jets have just clipped each other on a tight parking ramp. Mojo, you need to check the left wing. Crew chief Mojo races to check the tip tanks. So I walk up to the airplane, and I'm like, are you kidding me? This thing's all bashed in. Tip tanks are normally filled with fuel for long-range flights. They're drained for aerobatics, but still contain explosive vapors. We're lucky that didn't rupture or spark and ignite that tank. Randy stops the practice to inspect the wing. We decided that there was no structural damage. It was just superficial damage, and we could continue. Patriot one, go. As the team continues with the practice, Mojo turns his attention to the other damaged jet, the team's backup. It's not just one wingtip that had to be corrected. It was two wingtips. Son of a how bitch. How did he do that? Because the backup jet's the one that just got hit. Not paying attention, that's how he did it. Did he turn before you told him to turn? No. Wasn't watching you at all? Now we got two wrecked airplanes. Back up north, the Wingwalker's biplane is built, but it needs a test flight. And the only pilot Carol trusts Bonjour, baby. <laughs> has just arrived. And just how the hell are you? Oh. Underway. Marcus Payne is Carol's show pilot. This airplane is Carol's baby. And the way to get Carol upset is to mess with her airplane. She's very picky about who gets to touch it, who gets to fly in it, which is not very many people. Dude, I don't feel good. It's 420, go home and take a nap. It's time for Carol to get some rest and Marcus to get to work. All I'm gonna do is go ring it out and make sure it works. If it doesn't work, you know, I have your number. <laughs> so we need to get uh, Dave to move his uh, aircraft. As Marcus gets ready to fly, Super Dave offers to play wingman. If we just thought, hey, we're both going to leave together. Why don't we just fly to two and just see how it looks, see how it feels. Air boss, Marcus. Marcus, air boss. Fly to two, we want to depart uh, for some practice flying. Marcus said, if I'm going, he'll go with me. We'll go in formation. He's ready. These guys are always cooking up things like that. That's how some of their new stuff works into their routines. He had the right side of the runway. I had the left side of the runway. I looked over, and there he was. This is going to be a blast. Adrenaline junkies. They're never happy. They're always doing more and more and more. What is going on with these guys? There's two of them on the runway right now. Marcus is hogging one side instead of doing like this so he can have visual reference. <laughs> Hell, I lost it. I went ballistic. That's bull you take off formation flights. This little guy you don't even know on a test run. <laughs> It's just wrong. I just put it together. What if that was the day that I did something wrong? I'm leaving. Now it's not just my airplane and a pilot, but he's got to worry about some guy that we don't even know flying in formation beside him. Ten minutes later, Marcus and Dave return, unaware of the turbulence they caused on the ground. So you were able to hang with me on the takeoff? Yeah, man, no worries. You were right there. It was kind of fun. Perfect. <laughs> Hello, Carol. What you did out there blew my mind. That made me extremely uncomfortable. Carol can be very strong in her opinions. We took off in formation with the pilot that we don't know. He's never, ever, ever do anything like that again. I told him to never do that again, period. Ever. So the takeoff you did today made me kind of look, like pop a corkscrew. We don't know the pilot you took off with. Right. I, I agree with it's that. It's a test flight. I, I agree with that. 
And I'm not entirely sure that I like him, so. Well, I'm sorry I went as ballistic as I did. I'm sure I could have handled that better. No worries. As long as I have more ass and you have teeth, we're gonna get along. All right, man. <laughs> In Portland, it's the Patriots' last chance to practice before tonight's Twilight Show. After a rough start on the ground, everyone's hoping things will go smoother in the sky. I'm just thinking, let's get through this flight. But minutes into practice. One, two, go two, one, two. Say again. I hear something about two, something two's breaking away from the formation. Jet two has a serious problem. The hydraulic system fail light and the normal system pressure is dropping. Two all of a sudden pops up and says, I've got a problem. I've got hydraulic failure. Hydraulics are the lifeblood of the L-39. Hoses filled with high pressure fluid activate moving parts on the aircraft. Without hydraulics, the pilot can't engage his flaps, landing gear, or brakes. Copy that, two. Four, go chase on two. Four, chase on two. The number four jet breaks away to act as a spotter. My job is to make sure that Stash doesn't do something catastrophic, which would be flying into the ground. Yeah, how much you have left, how much pressure? Bouncing around between 50 and zero and out, settle on zero. Two has a catastrophic hydraulic failure. Oh. OK, everybody stay off the radio except two and Sky. As the ground crew prepares for an emergency landing, Mojo chimes in. And two, you can open the interconnect to be able to steer if you need more pressure. But Randy realizes Mojo's advice will make the problem worse. That can have catastrophic consequences. There's a leak in the main system, and you open that valve to replenish it. All the hydraulic fluid from the emergency system goes to the main system and out the airplane. And now you have nothing. Get your gear down now. Negative on the landing gear. Number two's got a hydraulic issue. The Patriots jet team are in the middle of an in-flight emergency. Pressure is dropping. We've got hydraulic fluid that's leaking out of the belly. Get your gear down now. Stash, the number two pilot, may not have enough hydraulic pressure to lower its landing gear. If the gear doesn't come down, we're talking a gear up landing. It could be catastrophic. Gear. Gear is the negative. With emergency. His only option is to engage the jet's emergency hydraulic system. What we don't know is if the emergency pressure is enough to drop the gear. This is an unknown. There is no guarantee. There's only one way to find out. Stash engages the emergency pressure. But he's not home free yet. Yeah, how much pressure? About uh, 80 pounds. Stash still needs to land and stop. The pressure's on Stash right now. He has one chance at this. But he doesn't have enough hydraulic pressure to extend his flaps. When you don't have flaps to slow you down, you end up flying faster than what you want to be on final. Two is in sight. At least runway two zero. Ferris wheel 100 feet eight. If he does it incorrectly, he goes off the end of the runway. Stash lands hot at 130 miles an hour. Now he'll need every last bit of hydraulics to break. You need to go get a mojo. There's just enough. Am I clear to go on the taxi? I just shut it down right in the middle of the runway, and the ground crew came out with the tow bar. Stash kept his cool, and that's what you need to do to stay alive in an emergency. I was a little bit scared. 
In Quinnell, it's time for an air show. For a small town, this is a big show. I'm going to send him over to show frequency. Roger that. Air boss Donna Flynn does her final checks before launching her pilots. I'm not hearing him. Just relay, he has to wait. The air show will open with skydiver Rex Pemberton. The first jump's going to be with a 1,000 square foot flag. But Rex needs a ride. Well, I can't jump out of Melissa's plane because it's a single seat aircraft. I keep saying she's got to get a double seat aircraft, but no, she needs a high performance plane. Yeah, I can fly it at 60. Marcus thinks he's got the perfect plane for the jump. It's a good way to open the show. I, mean, I can climb off here and just drop off the wing. Oh, sure, yeah, like sure. Then I will uh, circle you. I'll talk to Carol for sure. She has to be on board with it. She doesn't like it, we're not doing it, but I'm sure she will. I think for the flag drop, it would be cool if it came out of the Stearman. My concern at this point is we will have to be up. After a little coaxing from Marcus, yeah. let's do it. I mean, I'm game to do it totally. Cool. You know, it, it'll be good it. for the show. Carol agrees to play along. We have to say which aircraft you're going to use. Rock it and roll it, man. Let's find Rex. So get going if you want to go. Yeah, I want to go now. OK. I'll... Are you ready? I'm ready. Here we go. Here. <laughs> We're kids. We like to play. Marcus backs off the power, and I just climb out, and you're just hanging on the wing. And it was just once we we're in the right spot, I just walk straight off the wing. <laughs> it was epic. <laughs> we have as much fun here as the spectators do. And, you know, it's all for the crowd's benefit. When we can do stuff that's a little above and beyond, it's, all, it's always good. Yeah. Woohoo! Good flag jump. Perfect. That was really fun. Awesome job, dude. That was awesome. That was good. In Portland, the Patriots return from a stressful practice. Patriots return next to the rim. Despite his fender bender on the ground, Curly performed well in the air. The silver lining in all of this is Curly actually pulled it off. We're good to go for tonight. But on the ground, Wilbur, the team's lead pilot, just learns about Curly's collision. Why didn't we know about this prior to takeoff? We did. I didn't. I didn't. We know had him check it. When it comes to a decision like that, I know we could do better. I've been flying these planes for 10 years now. And I've... <laughs> After every flight, the Patriots debrief. It wasn't clear today. We had some radio issues. There's nothing we People about it. were tense. Why do we get to that point? That is wrong. It's I just like zip it unless somebody asks. Everyone was pushed to the edge of their comfort zone. If you're taxi over here and the crew chief is here and you're doing this, that means go straight. Yeah, from so where, let's, yeah. Let's work. We're getting into. I saw it. I could have done better. People were frustrated with their own flying. You could tell people were frustrated with the way the emergency went down. We just weren't at our best. In Quinell, the mood is lighter as Super Dave. Job. Wraps up his routine. Things are running right on time, and that's how I like to run my shows. Donna clears Kent Peach to land on top of this. A lot of people describe that as the uh, world's smallest aircraft carrier and world's smallest runway. Everyone stops to watch Kent. Oh, oh, oh. Go, go, go. Kent's target is three feet shorter than his airplane. Are you still doing and the truck top has just eight inches of wiggle room on the sides. I have to come running in there fast to get in there. And then I slide the airplane sideways for braking and then get it down there. Timing is everything. It's not on us. Kent has to land before the pickup runs out of runway. Wings are rolling again. Gusty winds, though. Wings are picking up a little bit. Hold down on me there, Nick. Abort! Abort! 
Go, go, go. An air show legend is attempting to land on the back of a pickup truck. He wants to get as close as he can as quickly as possible. Slow down on me there, Nick. Wings are picking up a little bit. Unbelievable. It looks totally nuts. Kent Peach must match his speed with the world's shortest runway. I'm looking at the top of the landing platform. If he slows down before I tell him, I'm not really realizing that he's slowing below my stall speed. And if I'm not set up and locked in, this is very dangerous. He can't get all the way to the front door. He rolls off the front. He rolls down in front of the truck. Not a real fun thing, to tell you the truth. Lock it. Lock it down. Ladies and gentlemen, he's done it. When he touches down on that truck and the wheels lock, we can all breathe again. At the end of the day, I'm an entertainer, and I hope people walk away with a smile on their face. Unbelievable, ladies and gentlemen. With Kent on the ground, Marcus Schobot. Donna clears the wing walking team for takeoff. OK, now, work. <sighs> Carol and Marcus need to set aside all distractions. The routine is low to the ground, so there's not a lot of room for error. I'm trusting with my life. Make no mistake. The most dangerous moment for Carol is when she transfers from the wing to the top rack. When it's time for me to break loose and start moving around, that airplane needs to be rock solid with reduced speed. As soon as I put my foot down, bam, prop comes back. If I don't pull the power to idle, the thrust will literally blow her off the airplane. Nothing is holding on to her. She moves quickly. Go, 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 go. Don't up and go. She has a tether to keep her from falling to the ground. But the tether will not keep her on the airplane. If she lets go, she's off the airplane. She has enormous trust in me, or she couldn't do this. Let's give a big hand for Carol Pilon and Marcus Day. They're an amazing duo. Whoa, hanging on my panties on that one. Yeah, that was a good flight, though. Not that. Not that. Donna's big time small town air show has one act left. Aerobatic ace, Melissa Pemberton, plays chicken with a biplane. Coming around. In the airshow business, we call it the squirrel cage. Two planes flying very close together in the box. Hey, roll now. It's always a big hit with the crowd. comes to an explosive finale. In Portland, the Patriots are getting ready for a rare sunset performance, now just two hours away. It's coming out of that no ring out of the back of the pump. It didn't take long for Mojo and the ground team to pinpoint the source of the hydraulic failure. 35 cent part brings a big airplane like this down. What else could you throw at us right now? Enough's enough. We, we can't take any more today. For Scratch, Jet Pilot 5, there's added pressure. His family has come to watch. One of my worst fears is having my kids at the fence and something going wrong and them not knowing if it's their dad. We're all on a heightened alert going into this twilight show, especially after having such a rough practice. The mood right now for this twilight show is extremely tense. You can see it on people's faces. You can see it in their eyes. The nerves are a little bit heightened. Patriots clear to launch. Tonight, the team must fly much of their show with the setting sun right in their eyes. The Twilight Show is one of my favorite shows. We're joined the 2,000 foot trail. The sun angle makes the jets glisten. You have the box. Sitting up to the free pass, Nick. Roger off those ones. But that low angle 
is just, it's hell. It's slow, it cuts your visibility to nothing. Show center. Power right on up. I'm going up into a roll, and that wingman is looking through me, and he's got to keep his eyes focused on me. Copy that. Setting up to the loop. And then the sun is right there in his eyes. Yeah, flinching's not allowed. Oh, oh. Watch out. <laughs> in Quinnell, the air show's over, and the crowds have gone. Rex. Me and you, baby. For Rex, jumping out of Carol Stearman wasn't enough. He has his eye on something faster. Dave's MX2. The plane's not designed to do that. I got to pull the canopy off, tie down all the loose articles, tape the seat belts down. I called the factory to see if I could fly without a canopy, and they said I was nuts. And Dave decides he can make it even nuttier. All right, let's go do it. Rex is in for the ride of his life. I'm going to put him in the front seat pitch up to about a 45 and then drop the airplane away from him and eject him out the top. I've never done a jump like this in my life. My heart's going a little bit now. Power off. Home. See you. The biggest fear I have is him hitting either me in the head or hitting the tail. If that happens, uh, one of us is going to have a bad day. Dave has to fly the ejection perfectly. I give him a signal, a tap, and he undoes his belt and turns around and faces me. And then I just pitch the aircraft up, jam the stick forward pretty much as hard as I can, and uh, he is ejected. Sounds crazy. And our way to unwind is just do something fun. <laughs> <laughs> insane, dude. It's insane. Like today we've got a new act. I'm in. <laughs> you have the box. Setting up the free pass. Check road you off mode one. In Portland, the sun is setting. With a rookie pilot making his debut, the jet team is the last act of the night. Watch now as they come from the right. Show center. That light is. It's a booger. All right, on up. It takes every bit of concentration to pull this off. But the Patriots refuse to blame. And hit it. It's all happening. It's right, and the music's hitting right. Oh, God. Everything's finally lining up to just say, this is why we put in all this time. This is what we worked for. This is what it's all about, baby. Break down, we fix it, we fly. <laughs> Love the smoke and the sunset like this. Setting up the flat path, 2.4. We did it. <laughs> Got through it. Go, big team. Two, three, four, five, six. Right that, Wilbur. Nice performance. Thanks, boss. Well, that was a much better flight. It was. Good part. At the end of the day, oh, yeah. Curly did a good job. Finally, after 12 years flying these airplanes, it's a dream come true. That other team this morning, oh. I don't know who they were. <laughs> I know. God, I know. We got, we got the Patriots back. This is what it's all about, the flights like this. Yeah, uh, it felt yeah. a lot better. Mm. I do wonder sometimes if a pilot could say, I've had enough, and walk away. This is the pressure with the Patriots. It's about leaning forward and, and seeing the edge of the cliff and being comfortable with that, because you might have to wiggle your toes to the edge of it. Next up. 
on Air Show. Come on, Super Dave's ultimate scheme. I convinced my sponsor to bankroll an entire Air Show. Don't f go up. Threatens to bring him down. Mark your legend failure coming in. 9.4 G. The Red Bull Racer. 400 kilometers an hour. Gets a bad break that could cost him his season. Yeah. Come on. And bad weather pounds the Patriots. Oh, three out. Pushing the aging Russian jets well and their pilots to the breaking point. What are you doing? 